So moving on to sort of wrapping up, getting to Kickstarter, you wanted to make this your moment where you you followed through with something creative and you made something happen for yourself. So that was sort of the driving force right. for getting to Kickstarter, right. right? You got funded on Kickstarter. Yep. And then after that, you got funded by Humble Humble Games, right? Yep. So let's talk really quickly, just in general, okay? Gen general advice for people listening. Kickstarter and, and getting a, a publisher, are they similar? Is the process similar to getting funding from both? Well, I think we had a probably a unique situation. We, we actually didn't reach out to any publishers in our development and we were approached before Kickstarter. So what? Yeah, and, and I'll tell you how we did that. I saw some GDC talk, I, I couldn't tell you which one it was. It was some guy and he said, show early and off show your game early and often and that and the way he emphasized that and when i when i took that in and re truly understood what that meant like it really resonated with me so i did that i showed like even the crappiest like very prototypical stuff early and often and i paid attention to what people were saying like oh wow th this this element's cool and i i would look into like why they thought this certain element was cool and kind of like getting a bigger picture of what was special about the game and then doubling down on it so right. it's a little bit of a b testing there's something you're really good at too thomas by the way you do that kind of stuff all the time on twitter even when you're doing your game dev vlogs right yep yeah that's it's it's also it could be a problem as well because sometimes you just have to go with your gut sure and you can't rely fully on the audience right and absolutely yeah but in the beginning it was super helpful because as artists sometimes you're like don't know what's what you, you produce a lot of cool things, but you don't necessarily know what other people will find cool. You're happy with any of the choices, but maybe one is AKA actually- AKA people will buy, right? right. If, if someone finds it cool, that means they're more likely to buy. So that it's important to sample your audience because it tells you, is this game gonna sell? Yeah. You know? A positive uh, response from someone who saw it is is a them saying, wow, this has value. Or this art oh, style yeah, has yeah. value because um, they're responding positively to it and value equals money so money yeah um but yeah at the end of the day yeah money is just a a form of someone showing that your art is valuable to them to them it personally yeah that's right right that's what a lot of people think of money as like you're taking it from somebody it's like if i'm passionate about making money from my games it's because thomas is like steal stealing people's money and it's like i'm not stealing 15 dollars from somebody when they buy a game they the, in their minds they said this game is worth more than my $15. Mm. So let's do a trade. Yeah. And that's great. You know, that's what you want. You want to be able to make a game that, like you said, is perceived as valuable yeah. to somebody else. And your own ideas and what you find exciting and what you think looks cool isn't necessarily what's valuable to someone else. Right, right. And your job as a game dev, and you're really good at this, your job as a game dev is to half of yourself is somebody who cares about what your audience's perception of your game is. And then the other half of yourself is what your perception of the game is. And you're kind of like split. Mm. You got this split personality between wanting what your audience wants and wanting what you want. And to balance that and to figure out which instinct and impulse to use, your audience's or yours, is what I think what's what differentiates a, a wealthy game developer and a not wealthy game developer. That's purely a monetary discussion. It doesn't necessarily mean you're a bad person if you can't provide value to the audience. If you can't, that's, you're not gonna make money, that's for sure. But it doesn't mean you're a bad person or a bad artist. Uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald, one of my favorite writers, wasn't very profitable in his lifetime. So he was very bad at identifying value. It wasn't bad, but he wasn't the best at identifying value or what his audience finds valuable in his writing at that era, but I mean, goodness, look at his look at his legacy now. Mm. It's very valuable in in especially in The Great Gatsby. So it's a it's a difficult conversation to have because you need to worry about your current game sales, but potentially you could leave a legacy with something that you just put your heart into that wasn't valuable at the time. Right. Right. If you're lucky, what you think is cool is going to be in parody with what the audience thinks is cool. And and it's not just necessarily luck, like, right? You, you as a game developer, you need to be a, a heavy consumer of media, movies, books, games, obviously, car anime, cartoons, different different things that are pushing the boundaries of like what is visually striking, what is resonating with people narratively. And the mm -hmm. more you build up that Rolodex, the better your taste will become. And the better yeah. your taste is, the more easily you're able to create something that is gonna appeal to people. 
That's really yeah. good. Dude, that just made me think about how my daughter, she's six. She said, uh, I think she said she doesn't like Coke or something. And I was like, I, you know, I don't want her to love Coca-Cola because it's terrible for you. But I was like, try it out, you know, see what you think. So she's like, no, I really don't want it. And so I said, no, just take a sip. And she took a sip and loved it, obviously. Mm -hmm. It's delicious. And so point being though, is that as an artist, you may say, but I'm only gonna make a game or an art style or whatever that is what I love. I'm not gonna step into all these other crazy ideas that young players are playing. I say that all the time. Like I'm always like, I don't wanna play Gen Z games because they confuse me. But sometimes you just have to play them to figure out why they're appealing. Mm. And then maybe that'll change your taste buds to then be excited to make that kind of game. You know what I mean? Sure, and nothing against people who want to make a game that only they will like. But if their goal is sure. to be financially successful, that is not going to happen. Because <laughs> Probably I mean, it's not. Just, it's just Probably logically not. that's not going to happen. I mean, it could happen just by some chance, but um, you have all these tools to like see what people like. Our, you know, we can display our game on Twitter or YouTube, mm -hmm. or whatever, right? Like a lot of these very successful games recently have had these crazy social media campaigns, or even like uh, Choo Choo Charles, um, his meteoric rise on YouTube created an immensely successful game because he was making the content for it. And um, yeah. I forget where I was going with that, but you know, and that's that is ultimately that is ultimately what I think you've been able to do. Yeah. You stayed Chris the artist that your grandmother instilled in you, but you also cared about how do we how do I build a team and how do we make some money off this thing before we even release it? If I make money, I don't mean you're like, give me some money and let's pocket it. No, it's like you you got the funding to actually do this thing full time. And you did that before you even launched your game. And I think that's really, really impressive. And you did it in three years. And by the way, if you're like me and you always dreamt of making an indie game as a full-time job, I have a free webinar below that goes into exactly how to make six figures with just a demo. I was just like you for years. I thought I had to make a game in its entirety before getting a paycheck, but there's actually three ways to make six figures before even finishing your game. I've done this multiple times. So check it out below if you do want to go full-time indie. And thanks for watching.